What's up, Wisecrack? Michael here. It seems like every day there's some new Silicon Valley startup that promises to change our lives forever. It makes you wonder, is our world turning into one big tech dystopia? What's the line between our digital and real life identities? And does having an identical twin make you twice as powerful? Let's find out in this episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Brilliant, where we'll be breaking down the 2010 film, The Social Network. This film charts the growth of Facebook from a sad boy revenge website to a multi-billion dollar digital conglomerate. To help me answer these pressing questions, I am joined by comedian and writer Jamie Loftus. Hi, my name is uh, actually Jamie Loftus Winklevoss. Wow. Yeah. Um, so whoever runs your Wikipedia should now add that officially. Please update that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd really appreciate it. And thanks for dropping that hot exclusive here. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, I've been waiting, yeah. That's awesome. Well, now that we have that out of the way, yeah. what is something you like and think is good about the social network? Uh, I think you first have to hand it to the Mountain Dew product placement in this movie. I've seen this movie a lot, and so now I'm like starting to pick up on mm -hmm. like little choices. And in every era, in college, Mark drinks Mountain Dew. Yeah. Future Mark at like the deposition. Is it a deposition? Yeah. Is oh, it? he drinks Mountain Dew in that. He's drinking Mountain Dew. That whole scene where he's like, "You have the minimum amount." You know, like he's yeah. drinking Mountain Dew. I think that's a good sign, though, of of them realistically depicting nerd culture in a certain era. Like yeah. it is so affecting and and so well done. And I like David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin are two people that, as individuals, I can find very grating mm -hmm. in certain instances. I don't know. I just feel like the the boys are elevating each other in this one. Yes, I mean to piggyback off that, Fincher and Sorkin are people that I have a complicated relationship with. Yeah. Fincher, I think sometimes for me is is too to be crashed just dark visually and seems to like obviously Literally, you're like yeah. turn a light on my friend yeah. yeah i mean like literal darkness sort of weird male psychological darkness i'm also like cinematography too dark too yeah dark. so he does that thing i find it annoying yeah in this movie it works stylistically yeah i love the look and feel of it i feel like it's aged really well the dialogue in this movie is so zippy and i think yeah. it works so well the sort of sorkin and eisenberg combo i think if your clients want to sit on my shoulders and call themselves tall they have a right to give it a try but there's no requirement that i enjoy sitting here listening to people lie yeah it really comes together yeah jesse eisenberg it's is an actor i really like who i feel like if you're not writing for him it doesn't always work yeah but in this like it, he's perfect for his role he's part he like delivers the lines mm -hmm. perfect like it just seems like uh at every level the right person is there yeah so i like i like the collaboration i think it's it's good all the things that frustrate me about them as individuals work here I don't know. yeah the eisenberg thing i struggle to imagine another actor that could slide in there and right. play the role as well mm -hmm. because he is able to play and i, I hate to use these terms glibly but a, a kind of sociopath. Go glib. Um, he's he's a he's a character that seems to have a very screwed up emotional life. Right. But captures a bit of humanity, a bit of fragility. My favorite parts in the movie Which is are like, when is that good to do. You I don't know, know but I, I so I struggle so much with the ethics of movies like this, where yeah. you're like, it's so compelling, but like, is that smart to be like? We should empathize with yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, who's like unquestionably a villain. But then the version of Mark Zuckerberg they're presenting here isn't actually really based on much fact because he's just a boring man. Yeah. And if anyone needs to see Zuckerberg at his finest, too, look at his Senate testimony. It's great. I actually am not aware of, of a subpoena. I believe that there may be. Well, so to talk about Zuckerberg then. Yeah. I do think this movie is a really good bad guy origin story. And often like bad guy origin stories or some crazy person falling in some toxic sludge or having their family murdered in front of them. In this case, it's that Erica Albright didn't want to be his college girlfriend anymore. And that was the inciting incident right. that led evil Zuckerberg down this digital rabbit hole. You don't have to study, you don't have to study, let's just talk. I can't. Why? Because it is exhausting. Dating you is like dating a stairmaster. That as a plot point works really, really, really yeah. well. And I love the Erica Albright character. I love her so much. She rules. And I think there's a reason too that like we talk about Rooney Mara's role in this film a lot. She's in it for like three minutes mm -hmm. and she crushes. I mean, her main scene in the film is before we get the title sequence. Games. Good luck with your video game. Oh, it's so good. Good. You're just like, oh, I, lo I love that character. Yeah. Well, um, and she's kind of there every step of the way. She's the inciting incident for Mark. Mm -hmm. She then is happens to be at the restaurant. And then the final <laughs> scene is him just clicking refresh over and over right. as he sees if she will be his digital friend. So her ghost sort of 
haunts him throughout the film. What else do you think is good or what else stands out to you about this film in a positive way? Um, I, I do like uh, how it kind of set up a whole generation of like an understanding or a basic understanding mm -hmm. of Silicon Valley culture yeah. and like the how like loose it is with money and how mm -hmm. like entitled a lot of people inside of it are and how it can like really result in bad things yeah uh, I mean in this movie you kind of just see bad things happen to people who end up being billionaires anyways yeah but I do think it's a good basic representation yeah. of Silicon Valley culture and mm -hmm. like maybe because in 2010 especially I think people were still kind of like drinking the Kool-Aid of like this is a revolution this is yeah. this is definitely not chaotic capitalism yeah. um, and this was maybe one of the first pieces of popular media that was like no it's not I mean, it's still yeah. maybe a little overly empathetic to Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. but... But it's haunting to watch now, because this movie, yeah. the things that happen economically and fiscally with this company seem like weird aberrations, but that is how money works now. Yeah. It, it's literally yeah. showing how our economic structures were forged in this world by a bunch of nerd bros. And no disrespect to those nerd bros. Well, to those nerd bros, Whoa. disrespect. But I to mean, like, disrespect to most of those nerd bros. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. This, this movie gets at this cultural shift when nerds became cool uh right, right. when when we stopped when when people that were able to do cool shit on computers were the ones who were able to make a lot of money right. and go to cool clubs and all that stuff right. um well before we get to the bat anything else that you want to hit in terms of what do you think is good? The script is amazing. Yeah. I do like the the way that most of the relationships in the, in the movie are written of like seeing like, I mean, you don't get to see tension in male friendships yeah. like this a lot. I think that that was kind of cool. Um, and to see like these two, like Eduardo and Mark not be able to like, just be like, you hurt my feelings. They have to yeah. like be in this billion dollar, you know, like. For sure. I think that that was like a really, interesting element of it yeah i mean i just i like i like the damn movie it's I, a good movie i also like the damn movie the final thing i'll say in terms of good is trent it's Reznor. a decade old yeah it holds up really well and like you just got a trent reznor and atticus finch atticus Finch, atticus ross that's, that's one of them yeah, is a atticus character from a book yeah <laughs> we've wrapped up the good the good now let's talk about the bad the things that don't work as well in this movie, both internal to the movie and in, in its cultural impact. So yeah. what's something that you think is bad about this movie? Um, I, okay, so I'm just gonna start with basically the last line of the movie uh, mm -hmm. delivered by the wonderful Rashida Jones, who is, I think, done a little dirty in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the line being, You're not an asshole, Mark. You're just trying so hard to be. No matter how historically accurate this whole movie has been, there's, you know, 10 years on, you're like, no, Mark Zuckerberg is an asshole, to put it lightly. We have very little evidence to the contrary. There, I mean, he, he's just, you know, chaotic neutral, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I, I especially hate that that line is delivered by mm -hmm. a female character we barely know. And I especially hate that it's the last line because then you sort of get the feeling that this is how Sorkin and Fincher feel at the end of like, yeah. well, ultimately, isn't he just a sad dork? And it's like, no, he knows. Like, I, I yeah. And that isn't that tiny thread? Away. Don't we have Erica Albright in the first scene say that he's just an asshole? You're an asshole. Yes. Okay. So and so then, yeah. And then, which is I like. I mean, that scene is so great. Yeah. And then. At the end, it's almost like this character that is way more sympathetic towards mm -hmm. Mark is like, she was wrong. You're not an asshole. Just like, you know, be a little more nice. You know, like, yeah. I, I didn't like that. And and a lot of the way that women are presented in, in this movie, I think um, is, is pretty bad. Yeah, I was trying to keep track of how women are, and I hate to use this terminology, like used in the film. Well, I mean, and, there's no other way to describe yeah. it. I think that the trope that comes up a lot is like the, the bitchy obstacle trope, uh -huh. where women do not necessarily um, do much, but they just get in the way of the male mm -hmm. characters doing things. So Erica Albright is in the way of Mark, like acts, you know, like it is bringing up things that are insecure about himself. Yeah. So the whole movie becomes a revenge plot against her. Brenda Song's character, Christy, especially like it 
uh, is an obstacle that's in the way of Eduardo. Yeah. Like, from, like she's distracting him from Facebook. And starting fires on his bed. Out of nowhere. That character, yeah. I mean, for the, at first you're like, oh my God, London tipped it. Wendy Wu. I'm so happy mm -hmm. she's here. I love Brenda's song. Uh, they're presented in a, as groupies at the beginning. There's another character named Alice yeah. who sucks Mark Zuckerberg off in a bathroom. Stall. Yeah, they do the bathroom thing, and they're both there at the same time, and it's just like bros getting sucked off by groupies we in never the restaurant bathroom. So the Chrissy character, she's like, she's presented as a groupie. That sucks. Yeah. But then she kind of gets involved in the plot in that she's there sometimes, and you're like, okay. Chrissy, what do you like to drink? An apple teeny. Great. For those. And she's, We're not she's being, mad. But then, well, she's not mad at first. Yeah. Like, the way that that character goes is she's she's there, she's, like, supportive, she's whatever, Sorkin quipping. Mm -hmm. She gets mad very suddenly. There's no plot justification. We are not led to believe that she's a jealous character in yeah. any of her previous scenes. And then in her last scene, she shows up, all of a sudden, she's, like, she's lost it. Yeah. She's, like, going... Like, she's losing it because she's so jealous. This is not something we knew about her character because we know nothing about mm -hmm. her character. Well, it seems like it's another way they have to try to make Eduardo seem like a victim or a good guy yeah. or someone who's trying his best. But I agree with everything you're saying. And it's something that, in terms of, like, the movie aging well, like, yeah. as a movie, it's aged really well. Mm -hmm. the stories age well. That, it's so hard to not see that in 2020. So what do you think about, and maybe this is something you don't think is bad. I'm not sure if I think it's good or bad. Okay. The very last scene, ask Rashida on a date. She says no. Yeah. She then says, you're not really an asshole. You're just trying to be. And then we see him just like requesting the Erica thing. I'm of two minds about that. I'm curious what you think about that as the final moment of the film. Ultimately, I don't think I, I, I like, I think like, script wise mm -hmm. and like narrative wise it makes a lot of sense and i like the first time i saw it and i think like for years i was like whoa you know like it's a really effective like writing mm -hmm. job but in terms of takeaway uh i don't know because it's yeah. like it is true that facebook started with mark zuckerberg comparing women to farm animals billy olsen sitting here and had the idea of putting some of the pictures next to pictures of farm animals and have people vote on who's hotter Good call, Mr. Olson. Then you end up being like, oh, he's so alone in the world. Isn't that sad and pathetic? Because now we know, like, he's first of all fine. And I just, I just don't, I guess in 2020, it leaves a worse taste in my mouth to be asked to empathize with him. Yeah, and I think there's like different ways to read the ending. I, I think to be critical of myself, I'm sure the first time I saw that movie in theaters, I read that last scene. Mm -hmm. and it's like, I get it. Just, just a dude that's like, yeah. Been, been done dirty. Uh, now when I watch that, I'm just like, oh yeah, you're just kind of a sad bastard and you deserve this. Right. And I hope that Erica, she looks like she's having a great time in her picture and she has a lot of activity on her feed. Sure. So we see that. I hope she's thriving. I hope she's everything's great. She's not real. Dating Tom from MySpace. <laughs> dating Tom from MySpace. <laughs> she's like. I wish MySpace would have come up more and that Tom could have been an enemy in the film. Why wasn't Tom in the movie? Mm. That alternate read, that's really, like, that makes a lot of sense. And I for sure, I mean, I was like all in the first mm. time I saw this movie. I was like, yeah. yeah, it's tragic. And and that was back when, like, Facebook was still cool. They hadn't, yeah. we didn't know they were giving our data away then. We're just yeah. like, We know so much more now. Cambridge Analytica, guys, look it up. Mm. Yeah. I also, I don't hate it. But the Timberlake thing, another thing. <laughs> I think when I first saw it, I couldn't it was decide like, which category. To, I'm like, it's kind of good and bad. Yeah, I think it's both. <laughs> it's fun that he's there. He's kind of a hand. Uh, bong hit. He still has the like late stage in sync, early solo Justin hair. Yeah. Kind of blonde curls. Yes, I was like, oh, we were still there in 2010. Interesting. Yeah. Put his sexy think, back. Because at that point. And I, I should have done the research here. Hadn't done a lot of acting, I don't think. He hadn't done a lot of serious acting. Yeah. Um, but he had been in in stuff. But I think yeah. this was like his first, like, oh, Justin Timberlake is prestige now. Like, yeah. It definitely feels like stunt casting to a certain extent in a movie yeah. that's otherwise seems very carefully cast. But it does work. Like, it I, does. It's Justin Timberlake is like, I mean, we he's been really bad in some movies. Yeah. But but in this movie, I'm like. Yeah. Ah. It makes me think there's a lyric in one of his songs, I forget which one, 
Um, Ooh, I know where, all of them. Oh, he says something like, he says, girl, it might sound cocky, but is it really cocky if you know that it's true? Um, and I feel like he embodied that in this Sean Parker character. He's, he's this guy that's like so cocky and confident, but he's like, hey, I'm right. I ruined the music industry. <laughs> and now I do cocaine off underage people's bellies and get in trouble for it. And the last bad thing yes. is Josh Pence erasure. <gasps> yes, please, please explain this to our audience. This is something I, I just learned as well. So tell us who John, Josh Pence is and why he was erased. I'm glad I could educate you on Army Hammer related matters today. Mm -hmm. So Army Hammer famously mm -hmm. plays both Winkies. I'm Cameron Winklevoss, and this is my brother, Ty. But, uh, and everyone's like, oh, he must have like done like a Lindsay Lohan parent trap thing. Yeah. He did not. There is a second man who is Army Hammer sized uh, in this movie named Josh Pence. He's still a working actor. He played, I don't know who was who, uh -huh. but like it was originally going to be two similar looking actors. And then I don't know who made this call, but David Fincher's like, no, we're actually going to deep fake. Like it was an early deep fake. Yeah. They deep faked Army Hammer's face onto this other actor who thought he was gonna be in this huge movie, and he is from the neck down, yeah. but he's not. It's I'm like I want his I want I couldn't find his take on it. Well, he was very classy about it. This is I'm so glad you're bringing this up because in rewatching it, especially in one of the rowing scenes, uh -huh. it, it looks weird. Yes. Because I was thinking to myself, does, how do they do, shoot do, do, do. this? And that was the scene in particular. It's one of the first rowing scenes where they're still in Cambridge. And it, it, you, you definitely notice it. That's sad, but hey. Once you know it's a deep fake, and it's when they're moving too fast, the, the yeah. deep fakes get a little like iffy. But So we can blame this movie mm -hmm. with starting the trends of the deep fakes that will now unravel our society from the inside. Spectre showed me how to manipulate you into sharing intimate data about yourself and all those you love for free. The more you express yourself, the more we own you. Okay, so we've talked about what is good about the social network. We've got into some of the bad. Before we get to the brilliant, uh, let's have a little bit of fun and do our lightning round where we can ask each other questions that are related to, kind of related to, or not really related to the film. Okay, so you could save one Winklevoss from the jaws of death. Which Winklevoss would it be and why? Okay, I think it's Cameron. Okay. And I'm not sure I'm getting the name right because you they are. look the same. Oh, but I, I think, he, is that the one who says, we are gentlemen of Harvard? <laughs> Let's say yes. Yes, if then <laughs> I want that no. one. I love that he's he doesn't want to sue anyone or do anything mm -hmm. bad because they are gentlemen of Harvard. Right. And he wants to go down with honor. The other one's the more rascally Winklevoss. I like the rascal. Like I like the, rascal? the one that's like, let's be straight. It's nepotism, what <laughs> we're doing, and we want it, and we want it now. What social media platform has ruined your life the most? Wow. Uh, mm, it's, I mean, I feel like it's a tie between mm -hmm. Twitter and Instagram for sure. Okay. I think they hurt me in different ways. You know, like Twitter is like, you know, you get more kind of personal attacks yeah. there has to do with who you are. And then, uh, Instagram people are like, Hey, why don't you like wax more? And I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, let women with mustaches vote over yeah. here. And, uh, but you're hurting my feelings. Wow. So, so, yeah. so Facebook off the hook on this one. That's. Well, Zuckerberg ever... owns Instagram, so. Oh, so he's, he has his fingers and everything. Yeah, I mean, Facebook is like, I, I don't uh. even think about it anymore. Well, now we're having fun. What's your next question? My favorite actor is Alfred Molina. If he were in this movie, who would he play? Oh, um, I think Alfred Molina would do really well. I'd like to see him as um, Zuckerberg's lawyer. Ooh. Yeah, and I, I feel so bad I forget the name of that actor or the name of the character, but the one who works with yeah. Rashida Jones. Yes. And then, uh -huh. if that happens, I would like to see an after credit sequence of Ooh. Melina and Jones that sets up a sequel that follows their story. He's a chameleon. Yeah. He's just a chameleon. I got to shout it out oh. at every opportunity. Uh, That's a great answer. Will Mark Zuckerberg ever be president of the United States? No. Will he run to be president oh, of the I United really States? Oh, I really hope this ages well. Um, I don't know. I feel like one of the things I will hand to Mark Zuckerberg is he seems to recognize his own lack of charisma. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to be fairly aware of that. And so I I would hope optimistically mm -hmm. that uh, he knows he's not charismatic enough to win over enough people to become the president. Um, hear that, Mark? It's not going to happen for you. Don't try. Which line in the movie do you think Aaron Sorkin jerked off to himself the hardest after he wrote it? 
this is hard because I want to say it's my favorite line. 6'5", 220, and there's two of me. Uh -huh. I don't think that's when he jerked off to. No. I think he jerked off to, and this is so boring. No. What's better than a million dollars? A billion dollars. I agree. And I think Sorkin went like, yes, right after yeah, he said a billion dollars. Yeah, he's like, and that's a night, and that's yeah. a night. And he's stomping around his mansion. His wife's cowering, oh. you know. One like, of his kids is home from college. Oh, and they're God. like, oh, dad did a masturbatory line again. Right, and then yeah. they're like, well, I guess it's like paying her for our college, so we can't say... I would, hey, if I didn't have student loan debt because my dad wrote masturbatory lines that made enough money to have paid for my college, get it, dad. I don't know. I feel like I would resent Aaron Sorkin so much if he were my dad. Yeah. Um, well, if you are a child of Aaron Sorkin, hey, sound so, off in the comments. Let us know. <laughs> if you're a yeah, child the comments of are your Aaron safe Sorkin. Space. He won't look. Um, okay. Well, I think that's it for our lightning round. Whew. Thank you so much for you're participating. Welcome. And I'm glad that we got to bring your man Molina up. Cool. Okay, so we've done our lightning round. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously we've talked about what's good and what's bad. So now we're going to get into the big ideas of this movie, yeah. if there are any. So let's talk about what's brilliant. Um, Jamie, you can go first. What is brilliant about The Social Network? For me, what holds up 100% is the opening scene. Mm -hmm. I love the opening scene in, like, every way. Yeah. I think it's, like, so well written. Uh, Rudy Mara and Jesse Eisenberg, the way that they play off of each other, it almost feels like you're kind of watching a play. Have you ever tried? I'm trying right now. To recruit? To get into a final club. To recruit? No. Are you, like... Whatever, delusional? Maybe it's just sometimes you say two things at once, I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to be aiming at. But Fincher makes it feel enough like it is a movie, and I just, yeah, I just, like, it, it's still, like, I will drop everything and watch that scene any anytime. Yeah, and you, you say it's like watching a play. I think it is one of those instances where the fact that Sorkin started out as a playwright is used very effectively. We're dating. Okay. Well, I want to try and be straightforward with you and let you know that we're not anymore. What do you mean? We're not dating anymore, I'm sorry. Is this a joke? No, it's not. You're breaking up with you me? You are going to introduce me to people I wouldn't normally have the chance to meet. What the f... What is that supposed to mean? Wait, settle down. What is it supposed to mean? Erica, the reason we're able to sit here and drink right now is because he used to sleep with the door guy. Something that I think is brilliant, and this is maybe me giving more credit to the film than it deserves, <laughs> but the film at least captures this moment that's the beginning of this era of this like ruthless techno capitalism yeah. that's now taken over our entire economy. Right. And you see them, you know, they literally go meet with Peter Thiel in the movie. Who um, we now know to be a blood guzzling monster. Just a bad guy. Another one. Literal vampire. If anyone does it, just Google Peter Thiel. But it, it really, it comes up in this movie in this way that seems kind of unique and new. And we have crazy Sean Parker uh, and these crazy business guys evaluating this company that doesn't produce or make anything of value right. as worth things. And it seems absurd if you have a sort of old school economic mindset, but this movie shows the start of a culture that now is our culture. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I, I, I want to give it the credit it deserves and like, I don't think that, you know, the people involved with this movie had that much more information about how bad mm -hmm. things were going to get when they made it. Yeah. So the fact that there are those kind of ominous tones there at all is kind of, I mean, it is pretty impressive. It holds up. No, for sure. And I yeah. think even the way in which, you know, they struggle in the film to figure out our, our good friend Eduardo struggles to figure out how we're going to make money off of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would have known that data harvesting mm -hmm. would be the primary way that they would make money? And who could have predicted that our economy was going in such a way where the Internet would largely be a space yeah. where people produce free content to be consumed, to gather data on consumers, to accurately and insidiously sell them shit that's targeted just at them. Like, when this movie came out, we weren't getting ads on Facebook that were something that we had dreamt about 10 minutes ago. No. That the algorithm has, has intuitively predicted about our unconscious. Right. And I think this movie gets at the seeds of that and shows us where things are going. Sorry, it got too real. What else do you think is brilliant or potentially brilliant? The other scene in this movie that I think is brilliant is the rowing montage yeah. and like that sequence yeah. is like, it's so good. And then you're like, oh yeah, the editing of this movie also rules. Like it's just, it's, yeah. it's really good. I mean, from a filmmaking perspective, I would struggle to say that anything is bad. It's still really good and yeah. it's almost annoying how good well, it is. Well, something else, and maybe this is me like reading too much into it, but that struck me about the film. Mm -hmm. When this movie first came out, I don't think what, I, what I'll call like digital alienation mm -hmm. was as much of an issue. 
And, and by that, I mean a world in which a majority or at least a good amount of our social relationships are mediated yeah. via social media or technology. And I do think the final scene we talked about before, which might be good, might be bad. Right. Um, something that is interesting about that is this idea that this punk trader, billionaire, whatever guy, has <laughs> like, no friends in real life, yeah. has alienated everyone, yet runs a digital network whose entire goal is the connectivity of humans and friendship. Right. He longs for a friend. And even in that last scene, he wants to have lunch with Rashida Jones' character because no one wants to hang out with him. He right. wants to reconnect with Erica Albright because he realizes he's fractured every relationship and pushed away yeah. anyone valuable in his life. And I think the movie, that was him then, and that can be all of us to various extents now. For sure. I mean, I think maybe like, I'm trying to think back to that time. I'm like, I think maybe it had started to exist, but there was no name for it yet. And there was yeah. no like, like if you felt that way, you kind of felt weird about yourself or. Yeah. Back in 2010, I was still like searching my own name on Facebook and adding everyone with my same name. You yeah, know, yeah. I was just like, oh, let's like, there's a Jamie Loftus in Britain. That's cool. You know, was, I was in a group that was We Are Michael Burns for a while, and there was thousands of us. And <laughs> oh I, my God. I forgot I was in it. Quite recently, I got a notification that was like, 18 people have left We Are Michael Burns. Wow, hateful. Yeah. I, I get a message from Jamie Loftus from England every once in oh. a while. He's like, proud of you, bud. That's really great. I mean, is it worth <laughs> Facebook though? You know, like no. It, I, that is yeah. that is interesting that it kind of, like, you know, foreshadowed that I guess. The fact that the first version or the first website he made, like his version of of hot or not, or or compare women like farm animals. Yeah. I mean, that's like how we date now. Yeah. I mean, I don't date like that. In case you're watching this. Brag. Um. I don't date like that either. Yeah. Okay. No one's dating like that, but. But, like, that is, like, Tinder. I mean, like, what yeah. he invents, like, oh, ooh, for sure. look at you people judge them on the basis of their face and make a decision right now mm -hmm. was kind of an offensive Harvard website that shut down the network. Mm -hmm. But now that's one of the primary ways that people evaluate potential romantic partners. I do also think it's, like, brilliant slash maybe brilliant adjacent how this movie um, really kind of takes uh, uh, like a, a nerd narrative mm -hmm. in a way that I think, you know, in the 80s was very like unchallenging of yeah. like nerd entitlement um, was really just like fulfilled yeah. at every turn. And it, th it, this movie, I feel like at least presents it, presents it with empathy, but also challenges it of like, just because you feel entitled to something doesn't mean that you deserve it and it doesn't mean that you're going to get it yeah uh, i think that that is kind of in a in a narrative where um a misfit is the um protagonist to see them like succeed and not mm -hmm. succeed is usually more than more nuanced than you'd normally get yeah i mean life. to go back to that first scene that you talked about as being so brilliant one of the ideas we get there is like nerds can be assholes too yes um the right. nerdy guy can be just as as the stereotypical jock or whatever. And if you look at films from the 80s and 90s especially, the like nerdy, alienated guy has always ascribed a level of virtue. Yes, even when they're date raping people in the yeah. movie. Oh, uh, shouts to Revenge of the Nerds. Don't rewatch it. Yeah. And 16 Candles as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, I, I mean, I, I do like that it kind of subverts that mm -hmm. without being like nerds are bad evil yeah like that's not the truth either but like presents yeah some level of nuance and kind of lets the audience make of it what they will i feel like yeah most movies weren't doing that then yeah it's cool wow another section where we have to admit whether we like it or not how good this movie is it's, it's, really <laughs> it's really good okay well the last thing we have to do now is rate it we both know that we think it's good we have to have some formal structure to rate this film. Yes. So, as you might know, the title of the show is The Good, The Bad, and The Brilliant. Yeah, I was told. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Is The Social Network good, bad, or brilliant? It's so good. It's so good. I can't, I just feel like with the Brenda Song character, yeah. I cannot say that it's brilliant. But it's, it's like so close to it. Yeah. If they had just gotten a... No, if they mm. just hired a woman somewhere, yeah. you know, it could be brilliant. I, it's so good to be. Yeah. It's so close to being perfect. I'm gonna just copy you here. I would yeah. say like it's it's knocking on brilliance door. This movie is so good. It's like I ding dong rewrite we'll, Brenda Song's character. Yeah. Uh, will we watch it? Maybe it's just deep fake that too. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'll say this movie is very, very, very good. Highest good I can think of. Not yeah. quite brilliant. Yeah, it's, but, but but like almost as close as you could get. Yes. Oh, I want to call it brilliant so bad, but I just would feel. 
Well, I appreciate the restraint, and I relate to it. This is, is a hard one to edging. call. Edging, brilliant. You're edging on brilliant. Uh, but thank you so much for being here. Jamie, if right. people are watching this and they think they need more Jamie Loftus content in their lives, where can they find that? You can find me on Twitter at Jamie Loftus Help, on Instagram at Jamie Curry Superstar, and then I have a feminist movie podcast called The Bechtel Cast that I co-host with Caitlin Durante that comes out every Thursday. And now before we finish, we're trying a new thing where we're giving some recommendations on if people like this movie, if they like these ideas, what could they check out? I'm gonna give one, um, and that is this book called Uncanny Valley by an author named Anna Wiener. It's a book in which the author talks about her experience working in some of these Silicon Valley tech companies. And it gives you a real inside view into how messed up and kind of dystopian some of these places are. Uh, is a scary read. Oh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna read it in quarantine, Michael. It's a good it. quarantine read. Love, I um, I cannot wait for the quarantine required reading. Yeah, list. well, because quarantine might last forever. Uh -huh. What do you think we should check out during this time? I think everyone should check out *The Age of Surveillance Capitalism* by Shoshana Zuboff. It is a very good book. I, I read it when I was researching for a Silicon Valley thing I wrote, and um, it basically is. Uh, it was published last year, so it's pretty up to date in terms of like. Why are nest cams? Uh, how exactly is your data taken from you? In what ways? And and how is it used to turn a profit? Yeah, this is a book many smart people I know, including yourself, have recommended this. So I know I need to read it. You gotta read Hopefully it. Hopefully others will as well. Quarantine, read it. Now we're done with that. We're done with everything. So Jamie. I wash my hands of it. We wash our hands of this. I sanitize we sanitize. my hands of it. <laughs> we're just, everything's clean of this. Um, so Jamie, thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, this has been the good, the bad, and the brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. And please do let us know in the comments if there's other properties you would love to see us talk about in the future. But that's all for now. Later.